Hey everybody, welcome back to B3R Garage. Today, we're working on Trusty Krusty, my BMW E46 seat time drift car. The project that we got going on is we're gonna bleed the brakes with a hydraulic handbrake using a motive power bleeder. Um, to me, this is the easiest way to do this. So the reason that we're doing this is I have just a little bit of give at the start of my travel before my brakes lock up. And I don't really like it. And so I'm hoping that I can get a little bit stiffer handle um, right from the start of the pull. And so I can have a little bit more confidence in using my handbrake during, during uh, tandems. So for this job, what you're gonna need is a wrench. Mine is gonna be nine millimeters for this particular job, but I've used, uh, I've used brakes that used 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters, eight millimeters, seven millimeters all over the place. Uh, for their bleeder valve so just check and see what yours needs you're gonna need some dot three or dot four brake fluid depending on what your car takes i run dot four on this one and then i run uh, molto rbf 600 in my other car you're gonna need a empty container i the bigger the better for me um and you're gonna want to put some leave some old brake fluid in there or you can put some new one if you like to waste waste money you're gonna want something to take your wheels off with. And then this is the Motive Power Bleeder. I highly, highly recommend this um, for anybody that if you're doing anything with drifting, it's so convenient for bleeding brakes, bleeding clutch lines, everything like that. And, and how much time we spend servicing these components, it really can help. And I'll explain more on how that works later. And then lastly, of course, a Mountain Dew, because it's Texas and it's hot. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our power bleeder. And so we're going to go to our, our brake fluid reservoir and we're just going to open that up. Make sure that you have some, some shop rags around it because brake fluid is highly corrosive and it'll just absolutely eat up your paint if it drips and it pretty much will drip. Now the power bleeders, make, you have to make sure that you buy the correct, um, the correct size fitting. So there's all different ones depending on what car you drive. They sell a universal one. The only warning I'll give you against the universal is if you are in a situation like my Civic, for example, where this is underneath a lip, the universal one has these clips that protrude from the top that you have to let them protrude from the top in order for it to tighten down. And so you won't be able to tighten it all the way down onto the cap and it won't work. Um, so it's, it's a lot easier for most other cars to go ahead and get the correct one. This one, luckily for me, works for my BMW, but it also works for the reservoir on a wow, on any kind of Willwood uh, master cylinder. So if you have, I have an inline in this one, but if you have one with an independent master cylinder on your handbrake, um, you can also use that to bleed your handbrake that way, which is extremely easy. So all we're going to do is screw this on. And then for extra assurance, what I like to do is air likes to go up, right? So I, even though it's probably completely unnecessary with a power bleeder, I will, I still will typically try to hang my, my line up so that all air is going to the highest point and there's no chance that I've got any air going back in the system. So let me grab something to grab a zip tie or something, and then we'll continue on with the video. So I got my line hung. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to fill the, the power bleeder. So I guess I'm skipping a step here, but they do say to go ahead, tighten everything down, pressurize to whatever PSI it, you're able to use for your particular brake system. System For mine, I usually go between 10 and 12 PSI. Um, and then watch for a little while and watch the dial to make sure that there are no leaks in the system, and if there are, then, then you find it. But we've already knocked that out. We know that we are leak-free here. So we're going to fill up the power bleeder. And you could try to be super accurate with it and not waste uh, brake fluid and just only use the right amount, but I like to not even have to worry about checking on my brake fluid. So I just go ahead and fill it up with a whole, whatever this is, whole quart, even though I know that's way more brake fluid than I'll ever need. And then I ended up throwing out the brake fluid later. It is what it is. Then we're gonna close up our power bleeder. And 
we're going to pump it up until we get to roughly about 12 PSI is what I'm going to go for here. You can see the clean brake fluid running up through the line and then down into my master cylinder. And then we're going to lock it in place and we're good to stay for right now. So we're going to set up our bleeder at the farthest point away from, from the master cylinder. So for me, that's going to be the uh, rear passenger side caliper. And what you're going to need is some flexible PVC tubing. tubing. And, I, and I emphasize, you want it to be flexible. All right. I believe it's either a quarter inch or five sixteen inch. I'll check and I'll, and I'll leave that in, in, uh, in text. But make sure it's flexible because if not, and it's hard, then when you go to push it over, it's going to crack and then you're gonna have a whole nother thing to de deal with and clean up. So what we're gonna do is push that tubing over and then we're gonna run it down into our old brake fluid. And, that, and what that does is basically it closes the system. So there is now no chance of any air going into the system from either end, from the end with the power bleeder because it's submerged in fluid constantly and then on this end either. And another thing that I will say on this, which I'm gonna unplug this for a second, same deal. We want to run it so that it goes up and then comes back down to our to that bleed nipple. And we do that so that if, if there is any air for some reason, it is not ending up in there. Instead, it gets purged up top. All right. And then from there, all we're going to do is crack this bleeder screw open. We're just going to open it and twist until we start to see fluid run out and then leave it there. And we already see one air bubble going up. So we'll leave it there and move to the next step. So far, the bleeding procedure has been the exact same as I would do for just a regular brake bleed. Where it defers with an inline handbrake is we have to get the air out of this cylinder as well. All right. So what we're going to do with that is first, we're going to depress the brake pedal fully. Then we're going to pull back on the brake handle and pull that fully. That's going to drive any air that's in the system. The next step is we're going to release the brake pedal first. And then we're going to release the handbrake. We're going to do that a couple times. So depress fully on the brake pedal. Fully pull the handbrake. Release brake pedal release handbrake. Now we come back to our line and caliper and we look at the line and all I'm looking for is I'm trying to see if I see any air bubbles that are still looking like they're coming out. It doesn't look like it. We've got clear fluid now running up so it's all clean fluid coming out. So that means we've gotten everything that we can out of this out of this brake caliper. So from there what we're going to do is just tighten back up make sure it's fully tightened there's been plenty of times where i thought i screwed up the job and all it was was that the bleed screw wasn't fully tightened and so then when i turned on the car and the, and the system pressurized i'd lose lose pressure and then we're just going to let this line go up here run it back through and we're now done with that corner so now we are at the driver's side rear. We're going to repeat the process exactly, exactly the same for this one. So we're going to crack the bleeder screw open and turn until we see fluid come out. A little air bubble comes with it. And now I'm going to do the process inside the car and let you guys watch what happens here at the caliper. So we're going to press the brake pedal. Then we're going to pull the handbrake, release the brake, brake pedal, release the handbrake. Press, pull, release, and pull back, push back. Press, pull, release, and push back. Now 
Now we're going to double check. I still see a few air bubbles coming up, so we're going to do it again. Oh, big air bubble release. Well, looks like we still got more work to do. I'm going to stop the video for now. Now, before we move on to the front, one thing that I want to show you is you, you're going to have to go and double check this gauge as you go through the, the process. Because what will happen is as that air escapes the system, you'll also lose a little bit of pressure within within this uh, the power bleeder. So just make sure after maybe every wheel, you come back, recheck, repressurize, and then move on. All right, so this is not ideal. My bleed screw is stripped. So when I do get this off, maybe I'll make another video on how to uh, install speed bleeders. Because these suck anyway. Real quick, just a quick little learning point. This bleed screw is a seven millimeter, all right, which a lot of people don't have in their toolkit. So a lot of people will use, you know, these suckers, very needle nose pliers. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. If you do that, you will strip this bleed screw. So I'm gonna have to figure something out for this side. We'll move on to the next side for now. On this side, let's do the whole process again. So, set up our whole plate brake fluid. We run our line up through something that'll hold it up. Make sure our, our line's submerged on one end and capped on the other. This one looks like it's a little better shape. It's still not great. I think we should be able to. making sure that our pressure's still up, which it is, which is good. We're just going to crack this loose. All right. And then we see it start running. From here, it's very, very simple. All we're going to do is just sit. We sit, watch the line, and make sure that we just watch it until we see all clean fluid coming out and no air bubbles, which it doesn't look like we really have anything, which my brakes were working fine. My pedal feel was fine. It really was only the handbrake. But since the handbrake is, is only teed into the rear lines, it doesn't really affect or be or get affected by what's going on on the front. So my fronts were fine. My rears had some air in them because of the handbrake. Um, it seemed like from what I was looking at, it seemed like that most of the air was in the handbrake and its lines uh, rather than um, rather than the rear lines. So we'll see after we bleed this. It's looking starting to get pretty clear. All right, so the last step before we shut everything down and get cleaned up, put wheels back on and all that, is the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to release press pressure from the cap. Once it's gone at the cap, next thing we're gonna do is remove it at the reservoir, and then just check my level, which is plenty full, and close the reservoir top. All right, from there, we should be ready to roll. So let's, let's see what our, uh, See what our handbrake looks like now. After the video, I still wasn't happy with the handbrake pressure, so I went back and bled both of the rears about 15 to 20 more depressions. Here I am the next weekend using the handbrake to enter at about 70 miles an hour, and it was much better. I also then use it here to adjust as I go into the last inside clip and gain more angle and slow the car down. The first time I installed an inline handbrake, I had a lot of trouble getting the air out. So I hope this video helps somebody to have less trouble than I did. Hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.